Welcome to Vidivo Church. We are recording a series of Vidivos to replace those that have been lost through some unknown means that either YouTube deleted or perhaps we ran into some kind of issue with copyrights and music so that you're not actually seeing the normal format for our Vidivo Bible study series but that you'll see them as we progress gradually change into a regular study of the Word of God that we present to you from integral specificity. Now, integral specificity is interesting because, you see, systematic theology and expositional teaching is what a lot of Bible studies and Bible teachers and scholars right now are doing, or at least they say they are doing. Now, what I find interesting is that integral specificity, as it is known by what we teach, is the integer of that with which is specific to the Bible being revealed by God and the Holy Spirit, letting us know that specifically every part is there and every participle is needed in order to be presented as a comprehensive whole. In other words, just like the DNA and the RNA are so intertwined with that codification or codification that requires all of its parts to be integrated, that too is how we study the scriptures. We don't believe in systematic theology because that's a system of studying of God rather than God revealing to us that with which he wants us to know. So we present it as integral specificity. Systematic theology hasn't been around that long. Neither has expositional teaching. You'll hear that a lot where you'll hear Calvary Chapel say that they do expositional teaching. And, well, they don't. They do preaching because expositional teaching would require there to be a teaching process that learning is being achieved through the interaction of a teacher and a student or a pupil. There are no Bible studies going on where you're getting these, you know, papers and having them graded unless you're going to Bible school. So when you go to church or churches nowadays, you'll hear people use the term teaching or Bible studies when in reality you're actually going to Bible preaching and you're being preached at because if you raised your hand to ask a question, I don't think they're going to stop preaching at you in order to answer your question. So it's not that they're, you know, wrong. It's just that they are using an advertising gimmick, so to speak, in order to accomplish something that they want you to get involved in. Now, there's a lot of gimmicks being said to be used by that also, where they say that the Spirit of God is teaching, but they're preaching. So, you know, guess what? Somewhere along the line, you know, they're going to put the two together. No. That's not the way Jesus did it. So we call integral specificity what it is because it is what it is, where it is, the way it is. So we also have that IS designation to make it part of the I am reality of what God is. You get it? So being Jewish, I, I kind of like the idea that we say what we mean and we mean what we say. In other words, I'm not preaching or I'm not teaching you I'm preaching so I'm not going to reach out to you and say to you that this is a Bible study that you're going to study and you're gonna you know learn all these things no I'm preaching hey baby you know let's hang on to the truth here so the fact of the matter is it is what we're doing called the Word of God by the Spirit of God to the people of God of the Son of God Jesus and what we mean by that at Vidivo is that my spirit bears witness with your spirit that if you have ears to hear what it is that the Spirit of God is saying to you and I together, then both of us are hearing, listening, and being taught of God by the Spirit of God, having your spirit bear witness with my spirit that we are the children of the Most High God, that we are children of God. So knowing all these scriptures that they fit together, and if you can't put all of it together and it fits, uh, there's something wrong with your theology. And that's why I don't go with theology. Because theology is the study of, 
and I want God to be the revelator of. In other words, I want God not just to reveal something. I want God to teach me. I want God to reach me. I want God to sit inside me. I want God to be beside me. I want God to whisper in my ear. I want God to do what he promised he would do in Deuteronomy at the very beginning when he said that he would lead, he would guide, he would abide, he would be in our very presence in the midst of us. So, I don't know about you, but maybe you've been sold a bill of goods when it comes to Bible studies and doing all these other things because, frankly, you know, <laughs> eh. I've been to just about every Calvary Chapel there is, and when they're tiny, you might get a Bible study, but when they start growing, forget it. You're just getting preaching, and that's just somebody getting up and telling you what they found out. You're not learning anything because you got to go out and find out for yourself. So that's why we call this integral specificity, and that's why we are video, because we are video, meaning that we are a video devotional study. We are devoted to following Jesus in a, an intimate way, recognizing that we can't teach you anything, I can't lead you anywhere, and that you have to find out for yourself where it is, what it is, how it is that God would lead you to go in the way that you should go. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you got to do this and do that and be this and be that. No, I'm just going to tell you what the Word of God by the Spirit of God to the people of God or the Son of God, Jesus, will reveal to us how we can make application or make that a part of our lives as we grow in the knowledge thereof. Because, see, you really aren't getting taught either because you're someplace else I'm at. I mean, I've been around for 40 years doing this. So your study might not have been as intense as mine have been. So you can't catch up. I'm sorry. You know, it's not like, you know, you just pour a bunch of ketchup on top of it and you caught up doesn't work that way. No, there's meat, you know, and then there's gravy and potatoes, and there's kind of like, you know, sauce to put over it to hide the mess. But, putting a little spice in it, you still can be taught of God. And it says in the scriptures that we all would be taught of God, really, by God. So, that's what Vidivo is about, and that's what Vidivo Church is about, and that's why we're Kind of going over this in a quick sense because this is the beginning of James, which is the book of James, which is James was probably the brother of Jesus. We know that by a bunch of studies that have been presented to us. People have talked about it. People have, you know, explored and studied it and, you know, related it. So if you want to know those things, Google it. I mean, you know, it's pretty easy. You know, James was the brother of Jesus, you know, and that Jesus had brothers and sisters, you know, and he had a family, you know, because Mary and Joseph, you know, they had interpersonal relationships, you know. They had children besides the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary as a virgin and having Jesus, a body prepared for him and placed inside of Mary that she should be, you know, conceived and related to us as God in the flesh that the Son of God would be revealed to us as Jesus was birthed of Mary, not of Joseph then we also know that Joseph and Mary still went on and had children. I'm sorry, it's just a fact of nature. <laughs> Hello, reality check. So we likewise know that James possibly may be humbled by not accepting Jesus as being God or Son of God. Maybe he had some issues like brothers do. But James seems to have presented himself at one point in time as being a leader in the church, a man who probably had come across the humbling experience of going, oh my God, literally. What if that happened to you today? What if somehow, say you're sitting on a couch, a guy walks in the door, you look over and you go, oh my God. Because it's Jesus. In the Jesus movement, certain miracles were, you know, phony. I'll admit that. You know, there were things that were lied about and people did. You know, and they were a little exaggerated. But there were facts that happened too. And Jesus appeared to people at different times. Kind of interesting. Just saying. Warning you. I'm a Jesus freak. But um, the reality of God sitting next to me is just as real as you sitting next to me. Because... There's nothing stopping God from doing that. He's done it in the past. He promised he would do it, and he could do it right now. That's what 
your relationship with the Bible, with God, and with your own personal faith should be all about. It should not be about the Christian religion. It should not be about Christianity. It should not be about going to church or finding things that make you think you've got eternal life or going to a Franklin Graham crusade. You know, Billy's gone, but now Franklin's running around with politics and Christianity. No offense, but eh, I don't know. Makes me wonder. But my reality is that I personally have to deal with God alone, and so do you. So because you do, James found himself in the same position that you and I are. Oh my God. He found himself being the brother of God, or at least stepbrother, so to speak. So I get it when I read James that there's some pretty, you know, interesting things that we can get from it, but there's also some things that we probably aren't going to understand at all because James has got a unique perspective that's going to go beyond something that we understand. For some of you, that's going to go pretty far out there because I'm Jewish, and even I have a problem with Jewish people. Hey, what can I say? Oy vey, boy, you know, you get two Jews in the same room, what do you got? An argument. Oy, mein Gott. No, you actually have a discussion. We like to debate things. We like to discuss things. We like to get into the in-depth of it. We like to understand it, make it a part of our lives, our being, our living, our breath. In other words, we like to get into it. So, in James, we find that in verse 1, it says, James, a servant of God and of... I'm sorry, but I'm kind of playing with this on a computer laptop because we're trying to use this in a hurry to record it to replace the ones that are missing. But James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Interesting. You're going to hear so many false arguments, so many false statements, so many false teachings about the lost tribes. Where are the lost tribes when James is writing to the twelve tribes scattered abroad? Twelve, folks. There aren't any lost tribes. Who lost them? The Gentiles. Sorry, they didn't know where they were looking, what they were looking for. They still don't know what they're looking for. Boy, because you know, now you got, interestingly enough, another cult come out that are called the Black Jews. Yeah, seriously, they're a bunch of black Christians running around calling themselves black Jews, that they are supposed to be black messianic Jews, that somehow they're the tribe of any tribe they make up, because they seem to make up a different tribe all the time on the internet. But they're making up all these phony baloney ideas about being Jewish. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm Jewish, and yes, we, you know, some of our brothers, you know, in the Jewish nation and tribe are black, but that's not the same as these guys running around in America claiming to be black Jews. No, they aren't. <laughs> that's as bad as the Indians. <laughs> you got Indians running around claiming to be Jews. Man, it gets disgusting after a while. You know, why would you want to be Jewish? That's all I can say is that, are you crazy? You'd be scattered abroad. You got other things to do. There are other things and priorities that God would have you to do. So, James being the brother of Jesus, James being that servant of God, because he had to humble himself underneath his brother and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James is acknowledging that there is a duality of purpose here, a twofold ministry that he's got. A servant of God serving God on the one hand, but also serving his brother. Jesus. Am I my brother's keeper? Whoa, boy, does James have a good lesson for us to learn. So, I find in verse 1 this very interesting character called James, but I also find him being interesting in the sense of he's a servant, and he's serving God, and he's serving Jesus, but he's also talking to his brethren, the twelve tribes. Now, you know, there are going to be people that are going to get all uh, into, you know, well, you got to be Jewish, you got to do this, you got to do that. No, you don't. What you got to do is you got to be like James was, humble. Yeah, James was humble. You see, there was a time where James grabbed his mother and his brethren and was going to stop Jesus from going to Jerusalem. Yeah, it's in the Bible. Seriously, it's in Matthew. So go read it. Go find out. Go read the Gospels. I mean, it's a good thing for you to read the history of it. But James was trying to stop Jesus from going to Jerusalem because he knew he would get crucified because the rabbis were out to get him. 
James knew this. James was, you know, kind of like worried about his brother. And dude, you're messing up, you know, like you, you, you riots, you know, you don't want no riots. I mean, come on now, you gotta be peaceable. Otherwise, you're gonna get locked up. You know what happens when they lock up a Jew? They kill you. Got news for you. <laughs> well, we talk about, um, what do we call it? I don't know. Some black movement. Well, we got Jewish movement too. I mean, everybody's been persecuted at some point in time. It doesn't matter whether you're black or red or yellow or green or purple or Chinese or American or Vietnamese or who knows what kind of ease you are, but everybody has been persecuted at some point in time. I mean, my God, everyone has done it even to their own families. You know, sometimes the older to the younger and the brother to the sister or the sister to each other. Boy, but here we have the reality of James speaking to 12 tribes, 12, they aren't missing, they aren't lost, they aren't gone, they aren't out of sight, they're scattered abroad, they're being scattered out into the nations. They have gone out because God was going to scatter them because Rome was going to obliterate the temple. At this point in time, we know that the children of Israel have become the Jewish nation. There are Jews in the world today that are scattered throughout all the nations. And they have come back into the land and started the nation Israel. That doesn't mean that they're right or wrong or whatever. It just simply means that they came back into the land and started the nation Israel. God knew they were going to do that, so he said they were going to do that. Don't get and make out the Jewish people to be super holy or something. I got news for you. Today, if Jesus walked into the nation Israel, they'd kill him again. <laughs> yes, just like they did the first time. Yes, they worked it so that the Romans, you know, were the actual administrators of it. But, you know, I mean, frankly, when you got a crowd, who are you going to pick, Barabbas or Jesus? Oh, I'll take Barabbas. I mean, he's a good guy. You know, hey, we, you know, we know him. Jesus, no, no, that's a good deal. You know, he can take care of himself. So what I'm saying to you, in this portion that we're reading is that God is speaking to each and every one of us. It's not about being Jewish. It's not about being right. It's not about being wrong. It's about being humbled by God using our life and our set of circumstances to teach us something so that we could be used later in life to teach other people the same things that we have learned. James was humbled by Jesus going anyways to Jerusalem. James tried to stop him. James warned him. James probably said while he was hanging on the cross, I told you. I told you so. And Jesus, when he rose from the dead, probably looked at James. I told you. I told you so. Well, he maybe not just to James, but to everybody in general. And he did. He told us he would rise from the dead. Nobody believed him, but you know, such a deal. So, James has got himself in an interesting, peculiar predicament where now the church treats him with respect. And James is probably thinking, wow, you know, I was probably, you know, less so faithful and more so not in sync with the Son of God, the Son of Man. So for you and I, I would wonder, are you in sync with God today? Are you kind of step with Jesus, knowing what he would do and knowing what he wants to do, accomplishing God's will? Or are you, in reality, created your own Christian Jesus or your own American Jesus or your own Jesus carries a gun or Jesus wants me to join the military? What kind of Jesus are you following? Oh, but Jesus, you scare the bejesus out of me. I mean... That's what happens in America. I don't know what kind of Jesus most people are following today because they aren't asking Jesus what to do, where to go, what to say. In fact, most of the time, they're just telling Jesus where to go, what to do, what to say. So be careful. You may be humbled like James to find out that you're wrong about a lot of things. You may not have the proper understanding that preaching is not teaching. You may not have the reality of having ears to hear what it is the Spirit of God is saying. You may not have eyes that have been opened up to what God is revealing to you. How do you do that? Hey, Jesus said that 
the blind are blind because they cannot see. But he would give them eyes to see that they should see. He would give them ears to hear that they should hear. He would cause them to become, you hear it, you know it, born again. So if you aren't really born again, then you don't know what I'm saying. If you aren't in the same place I am, then you don't know and you don't agree with what I am preaching to you. Because I'm only repeating what God is speaking through me to you. So while I appreciate all the consternation and frustration that people get when they want to yell at me about whatever it is that's coming out of my mouth, I'm laughing at them because I'm going, well, I kind of join you with that, but I'm yelling at God because I'm not the one saying it. He is. It's kind of like I'm the puppet and he's the puppet master. So I adjure you, welcome to this study. Just like James says to us, James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, I greet you to this study. I welcome you to this involvement of the Holy Spirit of God to come upon both of us and all of us and every single individual that watches this to discover what it is that God would do in us, to us, with us, and for us. As we approach James, a servant of the Most High God, and a, what did he call himself? I don't know, not a servant. What did he say he was of the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, yeah, okay. A servant of the Most High God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that's what you want to become. Because if you don't want to become a servant, and you don't want to be a servant of Jesus Christ, then you really don't want to study the book of James because you're going to get it right between the eyes.